is that switch. Ow! Oh, there it is. Oh, well, there you are. I can see you now that there's enough light. Did you know that light is a kind of energy? There are all different kinds of energy out there. The light energy here is being created because of another kind of energy called electricity. And that electricity is being generated at a power plant from the stored energy in... Well, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. We haven't even talked about what energy is. I will tell you this. You couldn't survive without energy. We not only use energy, we need it. Uh-oh. No. Oh. Ow. No. No. Energy is amazing to learn about, but kind of hard to describe what it is because energy is not really any one kind of thing. Actually, energy isn't a thing at all. Energy is more about the way you're able to do something or change something. Like this food I'm cooking up here. This stove uses electrical energy. It changes electrical energy into heat energy that warms the top of the stove. The heat moves from the stove top to the pan and then to the food inside that gets cooked. Cooking is one way that people use energy. And you probably didn't know it, but even if you don't cook, you use energy to do things and change things all the time. You use your own energy to throw a ball, pedal and steer, play on the playground, and all kinds of things. So you see, we use energy to do things. And even though energy isn't really a thing, that's probably why there are so many different kinds of energy that can do a lot of different kinds of things. Mm. Hot! <laughs> wow. The sun sure is bright and hot today. Well, actually, I guess the sun is always bright and hot, but depending upon the time of year or where you live or if it's cloudy, it might feel warmer or colder. Well, the sun provides us with a lot of energy. It comes to us as heat and light energy. Without heat and light from the sun, our world would be a dark, cold place. Light from the sun helps us see where we're going. Plants use light from the sun to make food inside their leaves. If there was no heat from the sun, the oceans would freeze, and it would be too cold for living things to survive. What's really incredible is how far away the sun is, even though it gives us so much energy. The sun looks small in the sky, just like those trees way back there behind me look small. The farther away something is, the smaller it looks. Believe it or not, the sun is way bigger than our planet Earth. If this softball were the sun, the Earth would be like a tiny grain of sand next to it. The sun just looks small because it's millions of miles away. That's like really far. I mean, really, really, really far. But although the sun is very far away, it's lucky for us that it's there. We can even have fun with it. Like when we make shadows. It's the adventures of Shadow Girl. From out of the light she came, casting darkness over evildoers everywhere. By night, she's a mild-mannered eight-year-old girl who does her homework, brushes her teeth, and plays with her Betty Burp-Up doll. But by day, she is Shadow Girl, defender of truth and justice on the recess playground. Hey, give me back my ball. <laughs> it's Shadow Girl. Thanks, Shadow Girl. Yes, wherever there are bullies, nose pickers, or even untied shoes, Shadow Girl will be there to make right the wrongs of recess. Wow. Check this out! 
I'm in a TV studio. And this, well, this is one of the light bulbs that they use to light up TV shows that they put on here. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a light bulb this big before. When electricity goes through the wires inside of a bulb like this one, it gets turned into light energy and starts to glow. The light from the bulb bounces around all over the place and lights the room up. When something gets in the way of light energy, a shadow can be made. Shadows are really just dark areas where light energy is mostly missing, especially compared to the bright space all around it. But think about it like this. Wherever light is missing, it's going to be dark. Sometimes your shadow is really short. Sometimes your shadow is stretched out really long. So why isn't your shadow the same all the time? Well, it depends upon where the light is coming from. In the middle of the day, the sun is up there, and so my shadow looks different. It's short, but in the early morning or the late afternoon, the sun, the place from where the light energy is coming from, is in a different spot, so it makes my shadow look different. It works like this. Here's a little army guy. Let's pretend like this is a real person. And here's a flashlight. We'll pretend like this is the sun. In the morning time, the sun appears lower in the sky. And the light makes a long shadow. When the light from the sun is coming from a different place higher in the sky, the shadow gets shorter. And in the late afternoon as the sun sets, the shadow gets longer again. That's why your shadow doesn't always look the same. You know, some objects don't block light out. Ouch. Like glass. We say that glass is transparent. That means it lets a whole bunch of light energy get through it. Well, then there are things like this lampshade over here. You can't see through it, but still some light can come through. Objects that let some light pass through them are called translucent. And then there are objects that don't let any light energy through at all. They block light out completely. We call these kinds of objects opaque. So you see, there are lots of things that can change the way you see the light. And now it's time for today's safety tip with Fireman Frank. Hi kids, Fireman Frank here with my trusty dog, Scooter. Here's another important safety tip. If your clothing ever catches fire, don't start running. That will only make things worse. What you need to do is stop, drop, and roll. Scooter will show you how. Ready, Scooter? Go. Huh. Okay, I guess it's up to me then. Pretend like my clothes are on fire. I'm not gonna run. I'm gonna stop drop, and roll that fire out. This has been Fireman Frank with today's safety tip. <laughs> Thanks, Scooter. Another kind of energy that we deal with all the time is called thermal energy. Thermal energy tells us how hot or how cold something is. Nearly everything that we see and feel has some kind of thermal energy. Even you have thermal energy. Put your hand in front of your mouth like this. Now breathe out with your mouth wide open. <sighs> well, besides a little bit of stinky breath, whew, you probably felt a warm puff of air on your hand. That's because your body produces heat. There's energy stored up in the food that we eat, and our bodies take that stored energy and use it to help us survive. Some of it gets turned into thermal energy. Mm. A light bulb like this one is nice, but it wastes a lot of energy because it doesn't just give us light energy, it releases a lot of heat too. When the light bulb is on, it even gets too hot to touch. Luckily, people have invented new kinds of bulbs like this one that stay much cooler than the old kinds. And they don't waste as much heat that way. They save energy and money. There.
But people use thermal energy in lots of good ways too. Maybe you've had hot dogs cooked on a barbecue grill. Heat from thermal energy is used to cook food on a barbecue and make it safe for us to eat. People also cook things like spaghetti sauce on stovetops using heat. An oven uses heat to bake things like delicious chocolate chip cookies. Yum! Dishwashers use hot soapy water to clean pots, pans, forks, spoons, and all kinds of stuff. People also use hot water to shower, bathe, and clean dirty clothes in washing machines. This is called a thermometer. It tells us how hot or cold something is by letting us know how much thermal energy something has. It can tell us how hot or cold the air is, or how hot or cold water is, all kinds of things. There's liquid inside thermometers like this one. When a thermometer gets heated, the liquid goes up the tube. The higher it goes, the hotter it is. When the thermometer cools off, the liquid goes down the tube. That's how a thermometer works. Now I'll use this thermometer to check out how warm or cold the pool water is. I hope it's a good day for swimming. Whoa! Energy is everywhere. Energy is the reason we are able to do stuff. It takes energy to make things move or change, but energy is not a thing. Much of our energy comes to us from the sun. Energy from the sun can make us feel very warm on a sunny day. The sun also makes shadows on the ground. When you sit in a shady place, you're actually using a shadow to help keep you from getting too hot. One kind of energy, called light energy, helps us to see things. In the daytime, the sun gives us lots of light energy. But at night, it can get very dark, so we have to use other kinds of things to make light of our own. Another kind of energy is thermal energy. Everything feels hot, cold, or somewhere in between. Things feel hot or cold depending on how much thermal energy they have. When thermal energy moves from one thing to another, it's called heat. You can tell how much thermal energy something has by using a thermometer. The higher a thermometer goes, the hotter something is. The lower it goes, the colder it is. Energy is all around you. It's even in you. Without energy, nothing would move or work. What do you think our world would be like without energy? So as you can see, we use energy for lots of different reasons. It lights up our world, and it's why we're able to do everything we do. Energy makes things work. All kinds of things like you and me, science and me.